Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be taking you through uh, five lesser known CSS properties which are definitely super useful when developing websites or applications. Also, if you are new around here, consider subscribing as I've got plenty of high quality web development tutorials and projects on my channel. Okay, so let's begin. The filter property allows you to apply miscellaneous filters and effects to things like images. Okay, so for example, we can change uh, the color of this image right here using the filter property or even apply blur. Okay, so going inside the text editor right here, I've got this HTML for that image and down inside the CSS, I've simply applied a 300 pixel width. Okay, so going down here, Let's add the filter property just like this. So as we can see, there are many different uh, values we can provide to the filter property. So I'm going to show you here the grayscale property and you're going to simply provide a number inside here. So if I want to make this image 75% uh, uh, grayscale, I can just simply say 0 0.75 inside there. I can save this go in the browser and we get a 75% grayscale image right there. Okay, so of course, if you say something like one, you're gonna get a full grayscale. Okay, so let's also apply a blur to this image. So we can actually put a space here. And this is going to allow us to then specify more values for the filter property. For example, we can say blur, then say something like a five pixel blur. Save this, go back in the browser, and we have a blur applied to that image right there. So I encourage you to uh, use this property and simply just take a look at all of the different uh, things you can apply here, and some of these might spark your interest. Now, as the name suggests, the text shadow property allows you to apply a shadow to your text. Okay, so this right here works in a very similar fashion to the box shadow property, which I'm sure many of you guys are aware of. Okay, so for example here, let's apply a shadow to this text. Okay, so going inside the text editor, um, going down on the paragraph tag here, uh, let's apply that text shadow. So. We can say text shadow just like this, and then we can provide, like I said, um, you know, it, it works in a very similar fashion to box shadow. Okay, so we can provide a zero here, for example, then a second zero. So uh, this first zero is your Y offset, and then your, um, your X offset here. And then you can say, for example, a five pixel blur on that shadow. Then you can say something like RGBA 000 and then 0 0.25. So basically just applying a soft five pixel, 25% opaque black to the text. Okay, so going back in the browser and we can see that we don't get much happening here. Um, hopefully it's visible to you guys, but just if I go back inside here and make this something like seven, five, it might make it a little bit easier to see. So we can now see that shadow right there. So, um, you know, I'm not too sure exactly uh, what type of designs are going to suit a text shadow like this. Um, you may alternatively want to put something like this where you say, um, one pixel, one pixel, um, then zero for the actual size. And you might get something like this where your text or, um, you know, your shadow is a lot, a lot sharper, but it's up to you guys. But that is the text shadow property right there. Okay, so next up we've got the pointer events property. So this one here is commonly used to prevent your HTML elements from triggering um, or reacting to pointer related events. Okay, so for example, I've got this button right here and when I click on the button, um, I've just got a simple alert message to signify that it's working. Okay, so let's go inside the HTML right here and we can see I've just got that button and then the JavaScript event listener right here. So how do we prevent this event listener from firing off using CSS? Well, down inside the button, we can simply say pointer events and then make this uh, none. Okay, so there are many more properties, or sorry, many more values you can apply to this property here, but most of those relate to SVG. I'm not gonna be covering those in today's video, but if I set pointer events to none and I save it, go back in the browser, essentially this button is no longer going to react to pointer related events. And we can even see that um, the CSS hover 
is not working so when I hover the mouse over the button we don't get a change in background color and of course if I was to click on the button we get nothing as well so basically you are deactivating your HTML elements and it doesn't need to be a button it can be any element we're just simply uh, disabling pointer events on those elements now it's important to understand that, of course, this is just a front end change. So don't try to use this as a form of security. Um, use it purely for the user experience. Um, make sure your back end uh, handles any sort of thing where um, you want to prevent an action from taking place. So that is your pointer events property. Moving on to the visibility property, this one here is commonly used to hide the contents of an HTML element while also maintaining the space which that element would otherwise take up. Okay, so this here is compared to, or it's, it, it's typically compared with the opacity property as well as the display property and setting those to zero and none respectively. So we're gonna talk through this now, but right here I've got these three paragraphs and I want to hide the second paragraph here without removing or collapsing the space which the paragraph would otherwise take. Okay, now I also want any sort of events um, to not uh, trigger off when interacting with the element. Okay, so right here, I've got a click event on this paragraph tag. If I was to click on the paragraph, we get this JavaScript alert. So how do we go about doing this? If I go uh, inside the text editor here, um, I've got an ID of water bottle on that paragraph tag in the center, um, and I've got the simple JavaScript click event down here. Okay, now with this water bottle ID um, in the CSS, I'm just going to simply say visibility here and set this to be hidden. Okay, now also keep in mind that um, the default value for this right here is going to be visible, but I'm assigning it to hidden right here. So if I save this and go back in the browser, we can see that now uh, the contents of that paragraph is gone, but the space that it would otherwise take up is still there so we have this large gap here as if the element uh, you know is actually visible now the key thing right here about this um, this uh, property and value of hidden is that now if I click here we do not get that JavaScript alert appearing so how does this compare to the opacity and setting it to zero okay so if I go back inside here and I change this to be opacity and make it zero, it's gonna give us a similar effect where basically the element is still there, but it's simply a 0% opacity, which means um, it's gonna be hidden. But the important thing here is, if I was to click on the paragraph, the event is still going to fire off, and we even get uh, a different sort of uh, cursor here. Um, we actually get the text cursor. If you zoom in quick, uh, sorry, zoom in enough, you can see the actual uh, text cursor. So. Basically, the opacity property is going to um, still uh, still fire off your JavaScript events and things like that, whereas the visibility of hidden is not going to do that, but it's also going to keep your um, you know uh, your space here between these two paragraph tags. Now, before finishing off with the uh, uh, the visibility property, I want to show you guys uh, one more comparison that is going to be with the display property here. So. I'm sure many of you guys have used display none before and you probably know what's gonna happen. So if I set this to be display none, go back in the browser, of course now, um, you know, uh, the actual content has been collapsed down and it's as if the element was never there in the first place. So that is your main difference there between display and visibility. Okay guys, I've brought back this image for the last property here, which is going to be object fit. Okay, so um, the object fit property is going to allow you to uh, determine how your uh, images and things of that nature um, display inside its container when the aspect ratio is in question. Okay, so what do I mean by this? So I've got the image from earlier. Now inside the uh, CSS here, I've simply set a 200 pixel width on that image. Now. What if I was to make this also a height of 200 px? Okay, so if I save this, go back in the browser, we can see now, of course, the image is, uh, you know, adhering to that 200 by 200 dimensions. Um, but unfortunately, the aspect ratio has been skewed and the image has been, you know, squashed down. Um, so 
We can actually prevent this here by using the object fit property. And it's going to um, be mainly useful to you guys when you do have that requirement where you're setting a width and height on an image and you don't know um, what the aspect ratio is or what the actual dimensions are of that image. Okay, so this, you know, um, this, this could be useful for things like, you know, a little profile photo, you know, icons or um, maybe specialized images for a component, whatever it might be. So um, to maintain that aspect ratio, we can set an object fit here and we can choose from many different options. I'm going to be covering two of these today. The first one is going to be contain. Okay, so contain is, if I just save this and go back in the browser, as we can see, contain is going to uh, respect your 200 by 200 pixel uh, dimensions. But if we actually open up the developer tools here and inspect, um, you know, this image, we can see we still get that 200 by 200, you know, dimensions. But essentially, the image has been, you know, uh, reduced in size um, to maintain the aspect ratio of the original image, but it's simply centered it in the middle there. Okay, so it's basically just, you know, it's it's giving you, you know, uh, space on the top and bottom in order to fit the image in. Now, this right here is probably not the ideal solution for um, many use cases. And the better solution in most cases would be to uh, set this value to be cover instead. So what the cover property or sorry, what the cover value is going to do is it's going to uh, maintain the aspect ratio, but basically it's going to clip your image along the edges here um, to make it fit. So it's a bit hard to tell with this colorful image here, but if we just remove this property real quick, we can see that um, we're losing some of the um, some of the image on the left and right here, um, you know, uh, and we're instead getting the aspect ratio back. So it's simply going to, um, you know, hide some of the image in order to fit in your aspect ratio as best as it can. Now, this right here is going to change depending on, you know, if your width or your height is the determining factor. So, uh, for example, if I make the width of the image here something like uh, 400 px, we can see now we're actually losing uh, contents in the height. So this time we've lost the yellow color um, and you, know, you guys get the point. So it's keeping the aspect ratio there, but it's sacrificing, um, you know, some of your image content. Okay, so that is the object fit property right there. And that is all for today, guys. If the video helped you out, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.